So there is a new DJI firmware update for the Mini 3 Pro. There is a new firmware update for the RC controller. And we have a new DJI flight, all exclusive to the DJI Mini 3 Pro. What I'm going to do on this video is split each of those sections up, talk about the controller, talk about the drone, and then talk about the additional features within the flight app. So let's get into it. <laughs> Right, so first of all, let's talk about this RC controller then and what exactly is new with this piece of kit. And one of the biggest new features is the fact that this is now available to buy completely separately and independently, and the fact that you can now use this with your DJI Mavic 3. So not only the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but of course the Mavic 3 as well. So let's look at what additional features we have got with this firmware update. So as mentioned, we've got added support for the use with the DJI Mavic 3, added support for download loading photos and 1080p video on an external SD card. It appears DJI have sorted the compass issue uh, that occurred in certain scenarios for certain users and this is something I had an issue with with, with this controller where my compass was completely out yet for some reason it would not give me the ability to actually use the calibration up until the last update and I do know another YouTuber, uh, Nobby Green, uh, has still got that issue where he can't calibrate it and his controller is showing off when it comes to the compass. Okay, so hopefully that is fixed on this update. Uh, we also have fixed a few minor bugs as usual. So overall, great news on this controller. The ability to use it on the DJI Mavic 3 is going to please a lot of people. Um, personally, uh, I've made no secret of the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of this controller. In fact, one little thing that was really, really frustrating is the fact that when I was screen recording this update, for some bizarre reason, um, when it does come to restart the controller after the firmware update, it cancels your screen recording. Really annoying. I should have remembered, but I forgot and then of course I've had to sort of beg borrow and steal and try and find the release notes again uh, for this firmware update so that's one thing that's really bugged me and hopefully that compass issue is fixed so now we've talked about the main features on the controller let's talk about what's new for the DJI Mini 3 Pro right for the DJI Mini 3 Pro we have added support for focus track and quick shots and panorama in portrait mode okay and of course we need the new DJI flight at 1.6.8 to enable that now that is absolutely fantastic because to be honest with you the whole point as far as I'm concerned of this vertical or portrait camera is the fact that you can quick share videos photos etc etc to social media and the fact that you couldn't actually do a quick shot um, in vertical mode made absolutely little sense to me but thankfully that feature is now here uh, although one little bug I have noticed and if I'll run this footage on screen now is for some bizarre reason if you are already in quick shot mode if the aircraft is in flight there is no way to actually switch it into portrait mode from landscape what you have to do is jump back out of quick shots into photo or video mode and then what you need to do is manually press the button to put it into portrait mode then enter the quick shot menu and even though it says that the quick shots not actually available in vertical mode it does actually work as you can see it has now picked me up as a target so just one little thing there that you know, it's really, really good that DJI have given us quick shots um, in vertical mode or portrait mode, but you have to jump through a little hoop to be able to get the menu up. Um, and not to mention as well, um, for some reason, one of the major features of this drone is, of course, master shots. And for some bizarre reason, DJI haven't given us portrait master shots yet. So hopefully that's going to come soon. This is going to be a huge thing. We have optimized the ability and the transmission distance of the image transmission system. Is this basically DJI saying they've improved the range? Um, because I personally never really had an issue with just the image. It was actually the control uh, points as well that I had an issue with. Basically, I wasn't losing uh, video feed on the drone i was actually losing full control but this update says it's fixed it and one thing i will tell you is if those of you that are actually familiar with my channel will have seen that when i did my previous test for some reason in this urban high interference area uh, this drone and rt combination was picking up the 2.4 gigahertz frequency whereas 5.8 is most definitely best however on this day after this update using the new firmware rc firmware and new dji flight app I can tell you that it did correctly 
pick the right channel for this area which is 5.8 so hopefully DJI have actually worked on that algorithm and this might provide a fix but what I'll do is I will provide a further update completely independent to this video and test out the signal performance in greater detail. We now have the added two second option to interval time setting when using hyperlapse after takeoff and of course this requires DJI Fly 1.6.8 to be able to enable this feature so that's always nice as you can see I've just demonstrated that on screen um, so hopefully Hopefully that's going to give those people that use hyperlapse so much more option. Increase the stability of videos when using hyperlapse. We have increased the dynamic range for hyperlapse. Um, again, all good features. We have got added support for continuous autofocus or AFC during video recording. Now, many people have suffered with this drone uh, so far regarding its autofocus or sometimes some shots being out of focus completely for no apparent reason. Um, when I did my video comparison, a top down shot I did of some boats, uh, this actually happened. I'd not focused it, I'd not touched the screen, I'd not done anything. I just put the drone up in the air and for some reason the focus was completely and utterly out. When I moved location to go film some trees without again touching anything, the second shot was perfectly in focus. So hopefully DJI have fixed that and hopefully that's going to alleviate some of the issues some of you have been having. Increase the camera speed when taking photos, not a problem I've physically had, but it's always nice to uh, snap that shot a little bit quicker. Optimised image quality of recordings at night in D cine like and fixed issue the videos recorded in some scenarios in D cine like flickered again nothing that I've seen I've not done a huge amount of night shooting but I've certainly not seen these issues but DJI have obviously identified them and looked to fix them with this update. Optimised the vignetting effect in DNG photos again not something I've seen but I have seen some of you on social media mention this so hopefully that is now a good fix and we have optimized the correctness of the battery level indicators on the DJI RCM1 remote controller um, now again I've used the RC remote controller or RCM1 remote controller with this drone and I've not particularly seen a problem or noticed a problem that's not to say it wasn't there for some users and it looks like DJI have fixed that as well we also have added a USB mode when the aircraft is connected to a computer and USB mode is a enabled the aircraft disables image transmission to extend the battery life and this is a new feature again enabled within the fly app 1.6.8 as you can see that is simply a toggle switch that you pop on or off now just to let you know when it comes to this actual update package okay it all comes as one big file so as you turn your drone on on your RC controller you will see that we get the prompt for the firmware update now this is quite a large one but it also contains the update for the drone the controller and the DJI fly app so don't be thinking you need to wait for the new app to come separately it is all bundled in as one so all you need to do is go ahead and click update and then that will install all of these three updates for you so let's talk about the DJI fly app 1.6.8 then and of course the main features we've already discovered and I've already shown you on screen is the ability to use quick shots uh, in vertical mode and of course you can use the DJI fly app to enable that function even though as I've mentioned it says it doesn't actually appear to be available it does actually work flicking through all of the menus I've noticed nothing particularly new in any of these uh, other than what I've already mentioned that new toggle switch or for the uh, USB mode and of course other than the fact that I've noticed that with the uh, apparent increased image transmission system um, or transmission uh, range etc uh, the fact that it did seem to pick up the correct frequency for this area but the most notable difference you will see on screen so welcome to the new redesigned compass on the DJI flight app then the first thing you're going to notice is I think it looks a little bit bigger on the screen which is always nice to be able to see what you're doing now one thing I have noticed is the white line the, which represented deep force horizon has now gone and been replaced by a green shaded area down at the bottom now if I'm perfectly honest with you this does appear a little dark I'm not really a huge fan of this little indicator here I did prefer the uh, the false horizon or with the white lines but of course this is down to personal preference one really cool feature as well is the actual dot representing your controller is now so much bigger and easier to see you can see because I'm pointing the controller towards the drone that dot is now lighting up bright green whereas before it was just a little arrow on the top 
So now it's so much easier to see whether you are pointing the controller at the drone to make sure you've got the strongest signal possible. Now, when we move to the left or move my body to the left or to the right, you will see that that indicator now actually turns blue i.e. not optimized for a strong signal so of course we can point back at the controller and that will all go green again now one little feature as well dji have added with this compass again this is all down to personal preference and taste traditionally the drone indicator was by the little arrow in the center of the compass whereas your home point and controller was down at the bottom using this little toggle switch here you can actually flick between the two okay so you can actually reverse that and put your yourself in the center of the compass and the drone will be at the outer edge of course as you are flying around you will see uh, the position changes in relation to your controller and your position however i must admit that possibly just stuck in my old ways i do actually prefer using the drone and the controller and the dji fly app in the old-fashioned way and i prefer the drone to be in the center i just find it a little bit easier on the eye but that's just my personal take and personal preference but overall, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to the drone, the controller, the app update, this seems a really good update. Everything seems to be working as it should. A few nice additions and, of course, the additional fixes, which, of course, should be stuff that worked in the beginning. Uh, don't get me wrong, but, of course, we can't fault DJI for being on top of this and fixing some of the issues. As I already mentioned, I will do the image transmission and signal test in a completely different video. So please do make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification to be notified when I do post that video. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.